So what's the impact of tonight's speech on reaching a deal? Did today's news and moves hit the presidential race like a rubber mallet hitting your knee at the doctor's office? Joining us now, Lawrence O'Donnell, MSNBC political analyst and former chief of staff on the Senate Finance Committee. Hi, Lawrence. Nice to see you. Good to be here, Rachel. Um, when Chris Dodd spoke out there about the, the, the possible politicization of the bailout plan, is that already done? Is that politicization, politicization also already a fait accompli? Well, there's a lot of politics in it already. but McCain obviously wasn't helpful and now it's pretty astonishing to me I just learned on your show that you have talked to the chairman of the Senate Banking Committee as much as John McCain has on this subject uh, Chris Dodd is saying McCain has spoken to me once now Chris Dodd owns this issue in the Senate he's the chairman of the committee nothing can happen that he doesn't want to happen McCain is not even on the committee John Tester freshman Senator from Montana is more powerful than John McCain on this issue because at least he's on the committee and that's where this work gets done. What I'm hearing from Barney Frank and from uh, Chris Dodd indicates that we're probably a couple of days away from final passage of this. And is it possible that the return to Washington by John McCain, this sort of holding the, the, the presidential debate hostage to the idea of a deal passing, is that actually conceivably making it less likely that a deal will pass? A little less likely, but the people involved are so professional that the McCain thing is just going to be a little bit of a fly that they have to swat away. I mean, what's going to be very strange about McCain's return to Washington is uh, we now know what he's going to do for an hour tomorrow. He's going to go to the White House. The president has saved him in terms of his schedule for tomorrow because here was a guy who was showing up in Washington with nothing to do I mean literally nothing to do not involving this problem right. yeah. all of this work gets done behind closed doors and he's not allowed in the, that room and so the president said all right I want Obama and McCain and the leadership to come down to the White House for what will basically be a photo op whenever you have a meeting that big there is no business conducted. I've been in those meetings in the White House. They're meaningless. And everyone who's in them is eager to get back to their committee rooms to get the real work done, where, which is where it's going to happen. Where does dissent matter at this point? We have seen some division within the Republican caucus in terms of whether or not bailouts in general are a good idea, whether these circumstances are extreme enough to warrant a bailout, even if they don't like the idea generally. There's some division, more minor on the Democratic side than on the Republican side, about what would be the appropriate conditions to put on on this bailout. When does dissent matter? When could it potentially change the bill? And, um, and in terms of what the next steps are from your time in the Senate, are those concerns material at this point or is it just rhetorical? They, they really do have to be managed very carefully. There, there's, look, there's dissent that's philosophical, that, that's genuine. Then there is dissent that is purely political. I'm a Republican. I'm in a swing district. I don't really want to vote for this thing. The thing that I would like to do is vote against it, say it looks like it's too much money, and then run against it in November. That's yeah. what I'd really like to do if I'm a Republican. The Democrats know that, and the Democratic chairman of those committees know it, and they will not bring this to a vote on the floor of the House or on the floor of the Senate until they have been assured privately from the Republican side that there will be enough Republican votes on this. That's where the president comes in with his party. He's unfortunately very weak at this time to influence his party. That's where Hank Paulson has to influence the Republicans. But also, there is a theoretical role there for John McCain. The problem there is he doesn't have any real followers in the Senate or in the House. He's never been popular in terms of his ability to uh, move legislation and get people to get on board with him. But the Democrats will not pass this on Democratic votes alone, they will need the political cover of the other party. We're going to spend a minimum of 24 hours in, the, in this process, uh, toward the end, on nothing but how many Democratic votes and how many Republican votes to get this thing passed. They'll be able to pass it, but they just need exactly the right ratio so each party can prevent the other from attacking over this in November. And, and it brings us, once again, as we have come down to so many times in the last 17 months, what is it, 21 months that we've been doing this campaign, between the difference between governing and campaigning. We've got two United States senators who are vying for the, for the, for the presidency. And as you say, John McCain doesn't have very many governing allies in the Republican caucus in the Senate. It doesn't have all that many friends, particularly on an issue like this. That said, Republican Party unity, their interest in seeing a Republican in the White House may pry loose some support, some potential moves in his favor if he tries to make presidential political hay out of this bill. And 
I would have thought before today's actions that uh, th that this was going to handle this is going to be handled as an issue of governing. For McCain to say he won't go to the debate unless X happens on this bailout bill, for him to say he's going back to Washington to work on this bailout bill and he's suspending his campaign, those are such dramatic moves. I can't help but think that concerns of governing have now been sublimated to the campaign on well, this. Well, and it's not going to work because the simple question is, what are you going to see John McCain doing on C-SPAN at 9 o'clock on Friday night instead of debating the future of this country. I just don't think it's going to work out for him. I think he's going to have to take his White House meeting as enough of a, uh, he's done enough in Washington and then get himself down to Mississippi on Friday because the, I don't think the debate commission is, is going to go his way on this. And I think it starts to look frantic. It looks like, uh, you, know, he, it, you know, he can't debate because of this. Well, he, we're in a war on terror, if I'm listening to John McCain accurately. Now, that means that every single day that is, where you're going to have a debate. We're in the middle of a war on terror. We're in the middle of a war in Afghanistan, a war in Iraq. There are plenty of things can happen, and the debate commission knows this. Plenty of things can happen between now and the schedule of all the other debates that could give you reason to cancel debates if this is a reason to cancel debates. So the debate commission, I think, is going to hold very strong to this. He always has the option, of course, if he thinks it's so important for him and Senator Obama to both be in Washington to have Governor Palin and Senator Biden do their debate this Friday. Step right up. I'm, yeah. Sure, yeah. I'm sure that's being considered, right? <laughs> right. And this NBC political analyst, uh, Lawrence O'Donnell, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Rachel.